Today, we discuss Miro. Listen, when it comes to running client workshops, the dream, of course, is to get those creative juices flowing, right? But typically what ends up happening is thousands of hours get wasted because of poorly facilitated meetings. So I have Maya with me today. She's a consultant who runs Fortune 100 workshops from leadership training to team building, and she has the insider tip on what makes things work. Maya? Thank you, Jason. I've been doing this a long time. My number one tip is to bring everyone into that visual collaboration platform. So personally, I use Miro and it's completely changed how I interact with the room. You have to give people a way to feel like they're in the room, even when they're not. That's something you can do easily in Miro. Otherwise, they've seen the same slides and format a thousand times. Falling asleep, eyes glazing over, yawns, all that. Exactly. When people follow me on the Miro board, everyone is literally going on a journey with me. We're adding thoughts, we're reacting, and we're voting for the best ideas. It's great. Connective magic. I like it. That's M I R O dot com. Israel is 5,690 miles away from the U.S., 11 hours by plane. Hate travels faster, in a comment, in a post, in a second. Jewish hate is up 388% in the U.S. Black hate, Muslim hate, and Asian hate are up too. When one hate rises, they all do. Let's stand up to all hate together. Share and wear the blue square from StandUpToJewishHate.org. What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. And I know that you are here to listen to the best humans on the planet to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. Let's do this. I am stoked. I got a real good person here for y'all today. So you know I go around this freaking planet of ours trying to find the best humans on it to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And I think I found her. So here she is. This is Bianca Thomas, and she is the co-founder, CFO, and COO of Evolve Ventures Technologies. And she's the host of Evolve Ventures Podcast. Don't you love when we get podcasters on here? I love it. She's a global podcast, reached over 50 countries. She is a cognitive behavior therapist and success coach who helps people break the patterns and beliefs holding them back from being happy, loving themselves, and being successful in reaching their fullest potential. So, uh, yes, we are having this conversation. How are you, Bianca? Welcome. I, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad to be here, and your energy is so booming. It's like waking me up after this long-ass day. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I know. I I got a lot of energy. Even my husband's like, sit your ass down. (laughs) I'm so glad you're here. I have like a really freaking awesome audience. I really, really do. I love them because they're always like DMing me and emailing me and stuff and like, oh my God, I love this person. Oh my God, this person was awesome. So Bianca, let's get to know you. Who are you, Miss Bianca? Who are you? Who am I? I am a girl. I'm a woman now, Jesus. I am a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my age for a second. I am a woman who hated herself and genuinely mm. believed that she was never going to amount to anything. And through the short version is through trauma and abuse and madness and a lot of pain. I was able to find out that I was way more than I ever imagined and that, you know, my voice mattered and that my life mattered. That's awesome. I say that's awesome. Not that you went through all of that stuff, but that you went through all of that stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, it's this weird space, right? Where you don't, you're not happy that people went through that, but you are happy when people emerge through that. Right. Right. And so that's what I mean by that's awesome because I've been through a lot of trauma in my life as well. Like really bad trauma in my, in my life, but I also know how damn strong I am because of it. Right. And Mm -hmm. when you start to find out who you are and your voice comes up, you're like, back up. Bianca's in the building. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Do you mind touching on that a little bit with us? Is that going to be safe for you to do? Okay. So tell us about some of the things that you've gone through. Like what, what kind of uh, trauma did you have that made you feel like, you know, I don't really feel like I'm worth anything. Like, what was that? And then I want to know how we transition that mindset. Like, how did we see the power in that? It honestly started at a very young age. I grew up in a family that they genuinely did their best, but they didn't know how to 
be there for their kids emotionally. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was the black sheep of the family. I was the problem child, the Same. rebel child, mm-hmm. the overly emotional one who was too dramatic and always was causing problems. And honestly, it led me into some pretty dark places at a very young age. Like when I was in fifth grade, this my parents got called from the school because I told my teacher that I didn't want to be alive anymore. And I was ripping my hair out and... I was bald and no one knew why. They thought it was just wow. falling out. And I was bullied and really like bullied pretty badly in school because having grown up believing I didn't matter, believing my family didn't love me mm-hmm. and believing, like truly believing that just I was not good enough. I was a pretty weird kid. And so I was trying to fit in, trying to get everyone to like me, and it caused me to get bullied. And so I had no self-confidence. I had no idea who I was, no idea where my life was going to go. And so at 16, I did what everyone does when they don't know who they are. They try to find themselves in someone else. Mm -hmm. Six Mm -hmm. days after I meet this person, he tells me he loves me and wants to marry me and and wants me to have his children. Six days after we Mm. met. And how was that for you? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, no, I was going to say, how was that for you? I'm 16. I didn't know what it was like to be loved. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Someone loves me. Right. Like, what? Right. (laughs) That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Same. Yeah. Needless to say, it was a horrific relationship. I was emotionally, mentally, and sexually abused and psychologically just like tormented in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so at 20, I was finally able to get out of it, but I was even more lost and even more broken than before. It's like, if, if this, if I was bad back then, like Mm -hmm. what the hell am I now? This Mm -hmm. person just proved every thought that I had about myself, that I'm worthless that my life doesn't matter. And so I'm trying to find myself and I'm starting to understand different components of my sexuality and different components of who I am. And I'm just lost Mm -hmm. beyond belief. I had a couple things going for me though that I loved. One of them was fitness. I was very much into the gym, into fitness. I was a really athletic kid. The second one was my love of people and understanding people. And want, and so that's why I ended up getting a degree in psychology. And so I end up meeting a mentor from the gym. He introduces me to personal development, introduces me to his mm-hmm. business partner. Um, I end up meeting my business partner at a Muay Thai gym. So it's a Muay Thai is like a fighting sport. I don't know yeah. if you know what it is. She beat the living shit out of me and we became <laughs> best friends after that. That's literally how we met. Oh my and gosh. she ends up telling me, you know, I've always dreamed of starting a podcast. And I'm like, no way. Two of my greatest friends, my mentors, they actually have a podcast and they help people make podcasts. Like I should set you up with them. Long story short, she's about to get married to one of them. They're like, they oh, wow. have the most extraordinary relationship I've ever seen. And she and I developed the podcast together. And this was right when the pandemic started. So this was March of 2020 is when we started. So she and I are building this business and I'm getting my master's degree in, in cognitive behavioral therapy. And I have all of these mentors and I'm doing all of these things and everything is amazing. But there's still that part of me that mm-hmm. deep down, I still didn't believe I was good enough. And now it's even worse because I'm doing all of these things and I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. Right. I'm not supposed right. to be doing these things. Like, mm-hmm. no, this isn't, this isn't me. I'm not supposed to be doing this. So what do I do again? I continue the pattern that I had going for 10 years at that point. I try to find my love and my validation and my significance in someone else. Well, this time it ends up being with a woman. I had been dating women on and off. It didn't matter, but ended up being with a woman, but my parents end up finding out and I'm still living at home at this point. I end up having to leave home because it got so bad that I couldn't be in a room with my parents. And we're good now, but it was a horrible situation. 
So I end up having to move in with this person after a month of knowing her because I had mm-hmm. nowhere to go. It was COVID. Apartments weren't right. Renting, right. I, That's I had, right. Yeah. I had no idea where to go and I had never lived on my own before. So she's like, why don't you just come stay with me until you find somewhere else? I didn't end up leaving. And in that year, I almost lost my business. I almost lost my business partner. She wanted nothing to do with me. I almost lost all of my friends. And it was the worst year, one of the worst years of my life because everything that I had worked for started crumbling because I started falling back into those patterns because me and this person were so wrong for each other that I just fell apart. And so after a year, I get out of it, thank God. And I go on the final, not the final, but I finally stopped running away from the demons I had been running away from for 26 years. And I just, I finally did the work like really, really did the work. And my entire life has transformed and evolved after that. The business is now booming. I see clients all over the world. I also work as a clinical mental health counselor. Our business is expanding and everything is growing now because I finally stopped running away from the limiting beliefs and the fears and the challenges Mm -hmm. that I was Mm -hmm. terrified of. And I finally did the work on them. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I'm so glad you did. And I also know that the journey was necessary. I think at times we have to go through these extremely hard times. Not everyone, but some of us do, right? Especially uh, us us black sheeps and hard-headed people, right? Uh, (laughs) I think sometimes we have to go through it because, well, it helps develop us. But it also really validates what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It really validates now when you help someone, you've been there, done that, wrote the book. Right. So like when you when you go through the the tough times that suck because they do, they suck. Right. It also develops this kind of character in you where you're bent but not broken. Right. Mm -hmm. Where when somebody comes at you, you're like, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) Yeah, I got that. Thank you so much. Right. But where before maybe something small would have broken you, Mm. it doesn't anymore. Right. It builds a a tenacity, you know, builds a strength, an inner strength. Do you do you feel that in you now? More than I ever have. But I think the thing with me is it it still hasn't become and I don't know if it ever will, but I don't think it's my. I don't think at my core, that's who I am, but I think I've Mm -hmm. developed that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think through the things that I've experienced and I see this with clients all the time too. Like I I wasn't born an audacious and daring and courageous and gritty person. Mm -hmm. But I think what I love so much about me and my life and my story is that I became that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love coming on these shows because I think people are so used to hearing these stories of, you know, someone like Tony Robbins, for example, who like, you know, he was just always meant for that. Or some of these other people like Oprah Winfrey, for example, like, you know, they were born for greatness. And we're so bombarded with all of these stories that I don't think we believe that it's possible for someone who didn't go through something like that or for someone who wasn't born like that. Right. Right to become that. And that's why I love coming on these shows because it's, I get to show people that like, no, 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 no. I swear it. It's true. You can do it because I did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like, so good. I was not supposed to be here. I was not supposed to be doing everything that I'm doing, but I think that's why I appreciate it even more. And that's why I'm even more excited about it, you know, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't supposed to be here, but I, I got here because I made myself get here. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting too, how our brain works, right? Or, and how our lives turn out because you were someone who was also very into fitness, right? Mm. Which, which is, as um, when you're, when you're looking at, it's like, oh, so she's really strong when it comes to discipline, fitness, going to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. But yet there's always that, that piece of our lives where it's a little bit of a disconnect 
from some of the other things that we do, right? Um, which I find very, very interesting. I think that's so cool that, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're able to like really go through and now blend in the, the two aspects of your life that you love. Are you still very much in love with um, fitness and working out in gym and all that, right? Yeah, it's it's a yeah. very large part of my life. Yeah, big, big, it's it's in you, right? It's it, like now it's in you. It's not even a habit anymore. It's it's in you. It's who you yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. So tell me about what you're doing with your clients. You mentioned that you work with clients now, and you work with them all over the world. So give me give me that story. Where you know how did that start for you? That must have been so exciting for you to start that. And um, you know what is that journey? What do you take your your clients on? So I always knew that I wanted to go into some sort of helping profession. Like when I was younger, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. And then I was like, hell no, that's not for me. <laughs> but I always knew that I loved talking to people and I loved getting deep with people. And I think that's why I like kids didn't like me when I when we were younger, because most like 13 year olds don't want to have very deep, intimate conversations right. about their right. Inner psyche. Like you're like, weird. Yeah. <laughs> So I always knew that I I was meant to have those conversations and to be there with people in those moments. And so I was just, I guess, like called to psychology. So I get my bachelor's degree and I had no idea what I was going to do with it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to go get my doctorate in psychoanalysis. And a cousin of mine was like, don't you dare do that here's this incredible program. You're going to go here and you're going to do this. And I'm like, all right. So I ended up going to the program and it what it blew my mind. So what my specialty, what I, what my um, degree is in is in cognitive behavioral therapy. And it is exactly the premise of your show, our beliefs, mm -hmm. how our mm -hmm. beliefs dictate everything about who we are and mm -hmm. what we do and how we show up in the world. And so what I do with clients is I really help them to understand why their life is the way that it is because of the beliefs that they are holding that they don't even realize don't even that know. they yeah. have. Yeah. And then we work on them. So CBT was made for, it was originally made for like depression and it's expanded out now and you can really do CBT with anything. And it's one of the most evidence-based, scientifically backed, uh, theoretical orientations that there is in the psychology field that and like dbt um, are two of the biggest ones and so i do that full time like i'm a i work at an outpatient clinic but within the business i also within like my own business i also do coaching so that's where like the success coach comes mm -hmm. into play so when someone comes to me we look at their entire life hey there my amazing community of straight talkers I just wanted to give a quick announcement because I wanted to introduce you to a transformative life coaching program that I have made exclusively for women. I want them to break free from shame and embrace their true potential so that they can build that life and business that they have always wanted. Now our transformational coaching will guide you, we will help you, we will uncover your passion, your goals, and we'll develop your roadmap to success. Visit me at ninaperez.com and you can join an amazing community of women that are on the same trajectory as you because I want you to create that life and business you deserve and transcend that shame and unwanted behaviors. So don't wait any longer. Visit ninaperez.com and let's embark on this journey together. Now back to the show. And we look at all the different areas of your life and what's going well, what isn't, and let's figure out why and what's contributing to it and what's hindering it. And then we'll do, you know, there's a bunch of different techniques and tools and tactics. And obviously it mm -hmm. depends on the person. But the first thing that I really have all of my clients do is start understanding what are the patterns that you have been running over and over and over again in these different areas of your life. And so for me, one of them was getting validation and love and my sense of worth and other people, especially intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. So from the time I'm 16 years old to the time I'm 26, it was 10 years, like from when I first started dating to, you know, the, when that last relationship ended, that was my entire life. 
Right. And even before that, it was, do people outside like me? Mm-hmm. Do my, does my mm-hmm. family like me? Do friends like me? Do the teachers like me? Well, let me manipulate myself. Let me change everything about myself to make sure that I am what you need me to be so that I'm okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that was one of the biggest patterns that I was running. So I do that with clients and it really helps them to see like, oh my God, I've been running the same pattern for decades. Oh my God, I've been, I've been doing the same thing over and over and over because I don't believe I'm good enough or because they don't believe that there's hope for the future or because they don't believe that they're lovable or that someone could ever love them. And so once we can understand what the patterns are, then the tools and the tactics and the techniques based on that person will come out of, all right, let's start to work on them. Mm -hmm. Let's start to break them down and give you the evidence that you need for whatever this new belief is that it's going to be. And it's not like this drastic change of like, I'm the biggest POS in the world to I'm like king of America, right? Right. Like you're not going to go from one extreme to the other. But if you fundamentally, let's say, believe that you're not good enough, well, what's the next progression of that? Well, maybe I'm not as bad as I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's gather some evidence. How do you know? How would you know that that's true? Let's go do it. Okay, cool. Once you get to that, okay, now what's the next progression? And what's the next? And what's the next? And I found that it's in those micro changes that we truly change at our core who we are. It's not the big, crazy, audacious changes that we make that change our life. It's the small, seemingly insignificant ones. Yeah. And that's so important. I'm glad you said that, Bianca, because I think people sometimes feel like it's just going to be a magic trick. It's all just going to happen. Right. And that is not at all how this happens. And it is, you know, I I call it, you know, just the 1%, right? Just do the 1%. If you can do the 1%, you are winning. Just do the 1%. Right. Right. So So, I'm really glad that, um, that you are taking them through a journey and, and, and doing that journey a bit at a time, mm -hmm. right? Because, uh, CBD is, is actually something I've, I've often looked at because I, I do, uh, I'm a, I have an NLP master um, certification, right? So, and I love that NLP stuff. I love neuro uh, linguistic programming. I love all the neurons in the brain and all that. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So you speak in my language. Yeah. CBT though is a really great, beautiful uh, process on helping people transform their lives. Right. And so um, I'm glad that you talked about that. And I'm glad that you talked about how it's going to take effort and work to do that. That's beautiful. I love that. Um, and that's what I want those who are listening to, to hear you say that if they call you when they, when they hear this and they say, you know what, I really like Bianca and I really like her story and I can jive with that, that it's not a, oh, Bianca's just going to wave a wand and do the work for you. Cause that's not how this <laughs> flows. That's not how it goes. I know, wish some- it was, I wish it I was, wish I wish was it was too. Easy, but <laughs> you don't get the lessons from that. Exactly. Here's something else I'll say. I've had a lot of people get pretty upset with me when I say this, but I will take this with me to my grave. Have you ever heard the quote, everything happens for a reason? Mm -hmm. I hate that quote. (laughs) I hate it with a burning passion. And the reason reason being, I do believe some things happen for a reason, right? I believe I met my business partner for a reason. Like that was weird. Our entire story is really weird of how we met. Right. But the stories that I have heard from clients, the Mm. things that I have seen them go through, the traumas, the unspeakable, the unimaginable things that I've heard people go through, there is nothing in this universe that can tell me that there was a reason that that happened to them. I don't believe it. I don't believe there's some divine entity that let that happen to them so that some greater purpose can make itself work because it's just not true. I think think we we say that. Do you think we say that to soften the blow of it? Yes, that's exactly what I was just about to say. I think we say that because we're terrified that if the world really was this random, unpredictable place that we would have no control. So it's Mm -hmm. easy to believe that so that we can get a sense of certainty. But here's where my point comes in. No, I don't think everything happens for a reason. And yes, the world is so random. But what's even more powerful than everything happening for a reason is you 
being able to make a reason to change the narrative of anything that happens to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some clients that I have worked with. The very first client actually that I had ever worked with. I'm fresh into my internship. It's the first ever like clinical client that I had ever seen. I was doing fitness coaching and whatever, but that's very different. Mm -hmm. This is the first person that I had ever seen. He had just, he was 50 years old. He had just gotten out of a 25 year prison sentence Ooh. because he was physically, emotionally, and sexually abused by both of his parents from the time he was two years wow. old up until he was 20. And he had an intimate relationship with his mother. It was the only relationship he had ever had. Wow. And his only coping mechanism was to set buildings on fire because he had no idea how to handle it. And I saw him go from someone who didn't even know what a cell phone was to right. someone who ended up becoming a mentor to other people who had gone through similar things. That's deep. He did not go through that for a reason, but he took his story and he claimed it. And he said, I went through this and it is awful and it is not fair. And I don't want anyone to have to suffer the way that I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do you think when someone says that it happened for a reason, is that the reason is that what you went through in life made you who you are today? I think that's exactly what I'm saying. You made it something. Mm -hmm. You took that situation that you went through and you're changing your life for the better because of it. And I think that's so much more powerful mm -hmm. because you're in control. The yeah. world is unpredictable. The world is scary. There's no certainty. There's some, but there's a lot of uncertainty. But yeah. what we have control over is us and what we think and how that thinking makes us feel and then what we end up doing. Right. What is one of the biggest challenges you think you've seen in your career uh, when it comes to working with individuals? Like what, what's a challenge that you've seen? And you're like, yeah, this is going to be a challenge or this is a challenge. Do you have a, do you have an example of something you've, you've faced that you're like, this is a tough one. I think the biggest thing that not even just in my clinical practice, but every human being struggles with is the belief in themselves. Yeah. The, for Making them. Hmm. No, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, I was going to say like actually, actually working them through that can be very difficult. So I, I, I see what you're saying. So go ahead. I'm sorry. In order for us to do anything, there's three beliefs that we have to have in order to do anything. We have to, number one, believe that this thing that we want in and of itself, in the, in the realm of possibilities of the universe, it's possible. Mm -hmm. The second one, and this is the one most people can't catch, it's possible for me. Mm, and the good. third one is that it's going to be worth it. Meaning the effort I put into this is going to be worth it. And the outcome of this is going to be worth it. Most people, most for most ideas, I mean, unless your goal is to be Kobe Bryant, like I'm sorry, very slim percentage of that happening. Right. But for most things that people want, they understand that it is possible in the realm of possibilities, but it's these other two that it's possible for me and that it's going to be worth it. And this is the hardest component of working with people. Yeah. It's that they have so much evidence to support the fact that it's not true. And they're so rigidly held to that, that they get in their own way. They refuse to see anything else mm -hmm. because they can't fathom to believe that anything else is different. That's really good. And I tell you, if the audience just walked away with that, they'll win. You know, because that is, that's really deep. And I know that that takes a lot of work. That's not a, oh, just answer these questions and you'll be yeah. good. Um, but, you know, doing that self-work, I think one of the reasons that we avoid that for so long is because it is super painful, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, but coming out on the other side is quite phenomenal, isn't it? And so I wanted to ask you a little bit about that, because I know that you were already going to, um, to take your, your classes, your, your CBT classes and all of that. And, 
and yet you said, but I didn't do the work in myself yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So how are you going through the modalities Were you, were you just kind of, was there a part of your brain that was kind of shutting off with the modalities and you're like, oh, this is for other people and not for me. Or how was that for you? No, I, um, I had done a lot of work on myself, right? So like my two friends who were my mentors and my business partner, they were both mentoring me, but so like I was doing coaching, like I was mm -hmm. working on myself. I was doing all of these things. And when I got into that program, it was like, oh my God, this is what I've needed for myself. Okay. But I was okay. too scared to do the work. Yeah. It, yeah. When I was faced with it, I was, I didn't have the second or the third belief. I didn't believe it was possible. I could change. I can mm -hmm. help other people. Yeah. But like, this isn't going to work for me. And right. so when I was going through that program and when I was really doing that, I was also, you know, in the midst of that really toxic relationship. So oh, that's true. I was getting validated mm -hmm. by my fear that it wasn't possible for me. I'm good at helping other people, but me, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. And so when that relationship ended, I finally realized Yes, I attracted bad people into my life. Yes, I had bad situations that happened. But I allowed them into my life because of the beliefs that I had about myself. Right, right. And it's, and it's not to like blame the victim. I'm not saying that at all. Like a lot of people suffer immense traumas that genuinely are not their fault. But Absolutely. for me, I do know this was my fault because I saw all the red flags and I denied them. Because I mm -hmm. just needed someone to validate me and to tell me that I was enough and that I was worthy of being loved. And it didn't matter who it was. And right. that's why I kept getting hurt. Right. And so when I was able to finally stop running away from that fear and start working on it, it didn't hold over me the way that it did anymore. So good, isn't it? So mm -hmm. good. Yes, girl. I'm so proud of you. I know that <laughs> took a lot of work. I know that is a lot of work because I've done a lot of work on myself as well. And I'm still doing work. I think we're going to be doing work on ourselves forever, right? For That's the rest the of our lives. For the rest of our lives. But we've gotten through a lot of the tough stuff, right? We've gotten through a lot of the tough stuff. Now it's whatever tough stuff comes in the future. But I mean, at least we have some tools. Mm -hmm. And we have some ways of looking at things and reframing and, you know, checking how we're actually um, absorbing something that's coming our way instead of thinking that everything is a big deal. Maybe some things we can step back from and say, I, what what emotion do I choose to give to this situation? Right. So mm -hmm. I really love the work that you're doing. Everything that you've dropped here today is just full of nuggets of wisdom and knowledge. And I freaking love these kind of conversations. So I know that my uh, my audience is like eating this up right now. So I want to make sure that before I let you go, because I promised 30 minutes, I do want to make sure that the people who are listening mm -hmm. and want to work with you and are driving with you right now, Bianca, know how to listen to your podcast, where that's at, where we can find all that. Did you write a book yet or not yet? Not yet. All right, girlfriend, get on it. And then, <laughs> and and where they can work with you and, and be a client and all that. Give us all that info. Absolutely. So number one, the podcast, Evolve Ventures. Um, our website is under construction, but EvolveVenturesTechnologies.com. That's another place where you can go. We're going to have a ton of resources on there once the website is fully up and running. Um, and then my Instagram is probably the best place to find me. So evolve with Bianca is my Instagram handle. I love it. I love it. I love you. I'm so glad you came on here. This was such a great conversation, Bianca. I appreciate your time. I really do. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me and for all the work that you're doing. So fun. So fun. I love people like Bianca. Make sure you guys get on it. Get on it, people. Get on it. Make sure that you get onto her Instagram. Like she said, her website is under construction, but that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, tag it so you can come back to it and make sure that you listen to the podcast because if she's dropping any of that knowledge that she dropped here today, that is going to be a podcast to watch out for. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. You are the best. Okay. I have the best podcasting community ever. I really do. And I appreciate you guys being on here. Make sure you go on to winject.com slash register W I N 
J-E-C-T dot com slash register and register for my free community because I want to be really um, connected with you and I want us to brainstorm and be with each other and connect in a deeper way. If you are looking for coaching, please make sure that you also email me at hello at straight talk, no sugar edit.com. I work with women and I help them develop that business that they are envisioning in their hearts so that they can win. Thank you guys so much for being here. Love you. Love you. Love you. This is Dina Perez, straight talk, no sugar added until next. Okay, here's how Miro works. See, it's amazing. What's everyone doing at David's desk? Ever since marketing started using Miro's collaborative online whiteboard, he thinks all our other teams should sign up. Why? He says Miro's making his meetings disappear. And if every team gets on it, that means even less meetings. They're using Miro for brainstorms, mind maps, customer research. So could we use Miro instead of having another 100 meetings for every round of feedback? Yep. You can comment, react to ideas, even leave a recording on the board. And what about presentations? There are Miro templates for that. How do you know so much about Miro? I've actually been using it all along. I just used a Miro board to plan the best vacation. Okay, I'm on board. See how Miro users save up to 80 hours every year by meeting less and doing more. Get on board at Miro.com with three boards free forever. That's M-I-R-O.com.